Now, when it comes to the carnivore diet, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make that you know hinders their results? Maybe they're not quite getting the weight loss they want. Maybe the energy levels aren't quite as they expected. What do you typically mm. see go wrong? Okay, number one, you do not need to consume any organs. None. You can, if you want to. Personally, I would not, and I don't, consume any significant amount of liver at all. And neither should you, in my opinion. You being you, the viewer, whoever you are, you do not need liver. You do not need freeze-dried liver. You do not need concentrated liver. You do not need fresh liver. You do not need raw liver. You do not need cooked liver. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. And there's a reason you don't like it. And if you do like it, what's wrong with you? No. The problem with liver is, or the potential problem with liver is probably too much copper. And that can be a real problem and cause real problems. There's no need for it. You certainly don't need to flush your system with huge amounts of vitamin A. There's nothing special about liver. It's not a superfood. It's an organ that comes from the body. And it's one that you don't need to eat. Any other organs you want to eat, go for it if you want to. Fine. And so that's number one, liver. Mm -hmm. Big problem, I think, for most people. And they don't even realize that it's causing the problem. Number two, the carnivore diet is not a ketogenic diet. It's not designed as a ketogenic diet. It's not supposed to be a ketogenic diet. Don't be surprised at all if you're not in ketosis at any given time, whether you're on a carnivore diet or a ketogenic diet, in fact, because most people that do ketogenic diets have no real idea what that's about either. I'll give you a clue. It's not about having ketones. That's not the goal. And that's not the thing to avoid being kicked out of ketosis. But will this kick me out of ketosis, they say, don't they, on the Facebook groups? Funny as, funny as. No, you don't. Uh, you don't need to be in ketosis, and the carnivore diet isn't designed to do that, and it doesn't. So that's that's cool on, in that regard, um, and that leads to the error. By the way, oh, I'm not in ketosis on this carnivore diet. It's because my protein intake's too high, so I need to cut that back and have more fat. No, you don't. You need to not worry about the ketosis thing. That's a pretty important one. Mm -hmm. um, you do not need to add several hundred grams of carbohydrates to your diet every day. Mm -hmm. No, you don't need to do that at all. In fact, that's a very, very bad idea. Uh, neither do you need to add one single gram of carbohydrates ever, actually. In fact, the exact dietary requirement for carbohydrates, zero, not one single gram ever. And that's the correct amount for most people. Actually, mm -hmm. some people do slightly better with very, very minimal carbohydrate intake, like 30 to 50 grams a day, sometimes even less than that. Fine, your mileage may vary, but several hundred grams, no, absolutely, unequivocally not. Um, what about dairy? A lot of people uh, over yep. consume dairy. Yes, a lot of people over consume dairy and swear by dairy and say dairy is the only thing that keeps me going here for some reason. Dairy contains quite a bit of carbohydrate. A lot of it. Not all of it. A lot of it does. Um, also, there's a large portion of the population who don't do so well on dairy because they react to it negatively. The only way to find out whether you're really one of those people is to withdraw dairy and see how much better you feel, if you do indeed feel better. Mm -hmm. what I guess. About... So dairy is plus minus. Mm -hmm. What about um, like under-consuming fat and sodium leading to not, not incredible energy levels? Yes. Um, it is possible to under or overdo it with either of the two main macronutrients that you need, fat and protein. If you overdo it with protein, then you'll have problems with your sugar regulation and you'll have problems with your energy and you'll have problems with your thyroid activity and you'll have problems with your renal activity and all of that, meaning your, um, your, your, uh, your uh, kidneys functioning, so as not to use too much technical jargon. Um, if you underdo it with protein, then obviously you'll be short on body protein to build your structure. So that leads to a whole bunch of other different problems. Same is true of fat. If you overdo it, that'll upset your gastric function. That'll upset your bowel function. Um, that can cause a whole bunch of knock-on effects. And if you underdo it, same thing. So here are the rules. How do you do it right? 
you would aim in the first instance for around about two grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass per day. And the rest of your diet is fat up to satiety. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it. And are you concerned, especially when people first start carnivore, they enter the low carbohydrate state, obviously they're retaining a lot less electrolytes due mm. to due to less insulin in the body. Mm. Um, do you think that many people don't put enough salt on their food and that results in them not feeling credible? In the first instance, in the first six months, 12 months of a carnivore diet, salt can be very, very useful, additional salt. After that, it's plus or minus depending how you feel at the time because your instincts will be pretty good as to whether you need salt at that stage or whether you don't by that stage about 12 months in. Um, if you have normally functioning kidneys, then excess salt will simply be urinated out. That's no problem. So if you do add it and you don't need it, your body will get rid of it. Um, whether or not most people underdo it with salt, I don't know. Whether a significant amount of people underdo it with the salt, I don't know. What I do know is that if you are changing to a carnivore diet, that you should not do that overnight. Mm -hmm. Do not change your diet from whatever it is to whatever you want it to be in one foul swoop overnight, bad idea. That will upset your system. That will cause health problems. Some of those problems can last for a long time. Please don't do it. Change your diet slowly over weeks. Takes planning and thought and stuff, I know, but it's worth it. Awesome. If you um, eat too much protein, you're going to start getting hyperglycemic, meaning too much glucose in your blood. The way to gauge a person's protein intake to be appropriate or otherwise is to track their blood glucose over time. We want to see a normal glucose level pretty much throughout the day. There will be a bump in the morning. It's called the morning phenomenon. We, we get that. That's fine. But I want to see what a person's blood glucose is doing throughout the day over a series of, of days. And in, in so much as that, the tool that we use for that is a CGM a continuous glucose monitor. In many countries and territories around the world now, you can buy them over the counter. In some countries and territories, you can't. You have to have it prescribed to you by a physician for some reason, because obviously it's hugely dangerous to give the power to people to track their own glucose to see what's really going on with it without, you know. Anyway, Um. That's the way to get the answer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And yeah. one when on carnivore, you know, the majority of people, obviously, you remove all plants, but there's one plant that a lot of people don't eliminate, and that is coffee. What are mm. your thoughts on coffee? There is no place in the human diet for coffee. There is no dietary requirement for coffee. You will not experience a coffee deficiency if you don't drink coffee. Uh -huh. I love fan. coffee, personally. Don't stand between me and the coffee. Not a good idea. Trust me. Not sitting in judgment around coffee if the person wants to drink some coffee. I think that there is a very clear least detriment coffee dose for a given person for a day. And some people have a higher tolerance than others, yes. What I will say is that in recent years, I had been drinking up to 10 or 12 cups of instant free dried coffee a day. And I was also chronically high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And everything else in my life was pretty perfect in terms of what I was doing. So I thought it's probably that. And now I'm going to hate this, but let's just do an experiment on myself. Let's just drop that coffee down to two or three cups a day from 12. Well, my blood pressure dropped right back to the absolute ideal normal value or slightly below within several months. Didn't change anything else, just dropped out coffee. Interesting. So other people will have other negative effects or the same ones or both from coffee. Your mileage will vary. It's a very individual thing. Mm -hmm. Coffee so, is a recreational drug. There's no benefit to it. 
to be to be honest if you're enjoying this interview and you want to see more carnival related content like this consider subscribing down below